Hi, this is the very first tutorial for Ableton Live 9. Uh, perhaps a bit of a waste of time as Ableton Live 10 is about to come out in a week, but here we are getting to know Ableton. So <clears throat> in this basic tutorial for getting to know Ableton, what we really want to know is what happens when you turn Ableton Live 9 on and what are the parts of it and how do we familiarize ourselves. So here I'm just going to launch it and go with what we get here. It comes on up and this is generally what you see when you launch Ableton. This is uh, an untitled one. Uh, sometimes if you launch it the first time you will get their demo um, their demo live set which is very exciting but uh, this is what you would get if you then closed that and just opened another one. So this is the basic layout of Ableton Live. Um, over here on our left we have um, the browser and uh, down here this is a little uh, the info viewer if you scroll over anything this will tell you what it is so if you come over here and say this is the track activator and there it says it down there this is how you turn the track on and off etc so just keep your eye on this and it'll give you a lot of information about anything that you're trying to do right here in the middle we have our tracks and right now we're in what is called session view. The tracks you'll notice look very much like the columns on a mixer and that's not accidental that's the way it works and normally up here what you do is you put in clips and they can play one at a time in a vertical stack one at a time vertically you can play many many horizontally. Horizontally uh, this is known as a scene and you can use the master over here to trigger an entire scene. We'll get to that later, but just to give you a basic idea of what session view is all about. Um, the other view is called arrangement view. It's the more typical view for a digital audio workstation and it lays everything out horizontally, but it's really the same thing. All your um, musical notes or recordings go here and this is essentially the track control and the instrument. And when you put an instrument here, it comes up down here. Um, and to switch back and forth, and by the way, just hit the tab key and it'll always go back and forth. Worth noting that this little thing here lets you know when, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, one view is not synchronized with the other and by pressing it then you can sort of um, synchronize the two views um, as much as they need to be so that they can operate. Um, but uh, we'll run into that later too. Um, moving on here we have over here is the help viewer and um, this gives you lots of information including a tour of live which means that they can give you tutorials for how to do all these things. And a lot of these are really, really helpful. I use them all the time. You will use them all the time. And um, another thing that can come up over here is the file manager. Now, interestingly, I'll get to this down here in a second. You'll notice that there are all these little triangles in Ableton for getting rid of windows so you can get more space. Like, watch, I'll click this one. And now we have a lot more room for our track, uh, the, the view of our tracks, whether it be session or arrangement, right? So this uh, can go down and come back up. And then over here, you'll notice we can do that again, and it'll get rid of the little um, info viewer. And you can go up to this one over here and get rid of your file browser. So you can get um, a lot more room to be able to work. Interestingly, the only one that doesn't do that, and I don't know why it is, is the help window. To get rid of the help window, you just have to click this X and it goes away and there's no way to get it back. No, there is. You come up here to the view and you hit help view. And there it is, it comes right back. Um, just while we're up there, you can also notice that you can get the file manager here as well and file management will tell you where all your stuff is 
that is associated with this uh, open file. So that is the basics of um, the layout here. Now, <clears throat> up along the top, um, you have your uh, beats per minute. You have, uh, this is called transport, which is play, stop, and record, and things like that. But this is really for arrangement view. So you'll see this running when the arrangement view is running, not necessarily only when the session view is running. Um, this is uh, controls for uh, looping, punch in, punch out, things like that. And over here is, um, I guess I would call it mostly MIDI control, um, another thing that we'll get to later. Um, mostly we're just going to find our way around this uh, thing right now. So um, one of the first things to do when you open up live is to open up your preferences and get it set up to work. So on a Macintosh we hit command comma and our preferences pops right up. You can also go right up here to live and hit preferences. If you're on a PC it will probably tell you right here how to access your preferences. On a Macintosh preferences are always command comma in every program. So <clears throat> here's our preferences and I'm gonna oh you can't make them bigger they just are the way they are. Um, and you know uh, the things that are important in here look feel eh, maybe not so much I'm just trying to see if uh, there's anything here we want to uh, play with no um, audio audio is important if you're on a Macintosh you're probably going to want to select core audio if you're just learning this probably core audio if you have an input output device a an audio interface as they might call it you would probably want to select that so first we select our driver on a Macintosh at least for the simple beginnings we're going to select core audio and then if you have a device you would be selecting the device in this case um, we're going to <laughs> I'm a little worried to do it but I'll do it anyway um, select the built-in microphone which is the one that I'm using and if you weren't making a screen movie as I am right now you would then pick your device and decide how you're what you're going to use to get your audio in in my case I can't choose my microphone because I'm using it and um, actually I just did this one second ago and it um, stopped recording so we're just gonna I'm going to leave this on no device I don't need an input right now but this is where you would select it and the built-in output of course is uh, what we're going to select for built-in out I've got a couple other um, things that I could use with my computer but built-in output is fine <clears throat> um, you're gonna want it to be at 48,000 that's the industry standard for um, working with sound. Uh, 41,000 is what is on a CD, but of course you want to edit it a little higher quality and then knock it down a little bit when you put it on the CD. Uh, 512 sample buffer size is fine unless you have some sort of problem and the rest of this is all very advanced. So, and then um, going down through the tabs here, this is where we have our MIDI control. We're not dealing with that yet today. This is where we have our various um, uh, files that the, that uh, Ableton accesses. Um, again, not dealing with that today. Our library, however, is something that we will deal with today. I like to have my library uh, located in some place where I can get it, and that, for me, is on my Google Drive. So go relocate your library to somewhere that is convenient for you, perhaps even an external drive to the computer that you're using. Uh, let's say you're using a school computer or something like that. And so um, I take my, my Google Drive 
<coughs> excuse me, sorry about the throat. Um, and I'm putting it right over here. I've got a little folder called Ableton Live. And here's my user library. And that is what, um, you might not have this already. You could make a folder called Ableton Live and then select it. And then it will put your user library there. Okay. And then um, with our other things here, I think um, there's uh, nothing too much to worry about. So I think we're all set up now to actually use live. And there's only one other thing I wanted to do before we finished here. We're not really going to, uh, to uh, start making music, just really kind of get set up to do it. And that is, <coughs> if you're making music from files that you have on your computer, it's nice if you can access them over here. And you could do that in a couple different places. If you look uh, closely over here, you have a user library. And so that was the user library I just showed you in where I have clips, defaults, export files, grooves, presets, and samples. But maybe you've just downloaded a whole bunch of sounds and you just want to be able to get to them. In which case, you can just come down here and say, add a folder and you get this little uh, pop-up thing, and I um, will go to our class folder, which I have on my Google Drive in a different place, and I'll go get uh, group, uh, group one sounds, just as an example. So here's all these recorded sounds, and I'm just going to import group one sounds. I open them, and lo and behold, right down here now, I have all of group one sounds, there they are. And so as kind of a next thing, I suppose, before we get started here, I'm just going to grab, these, these aren't particularly definitive, let's grab laugh here, because we can be pretty sure what it'll sound like. So this down here is sort of the, um, what do you call it, the preview, the preview um, of what the what it's going to sound like. So that's playing that over and over. I'm going to turn it off here and then just point out these things here. So this is a MIDI channel. No good for what we're doing right now. So I'm actually going to control click on it and just delete it. Likewise with this one. And what we're going to do is use audio channels here. And we're going to take this laugh, or whatever sound file you happen to have, and move it over here, drag it over to there. And now, <clears throat> that wave form, that sound file, is loaded in here. And when you click right here, it will play it. Oh, very nice. So I'm just going to, yeah, it is up. So, and it's playing it around and around and again. And how can, how can we, well, first, how can we stop it? We can click in any box and it will stop after it reaches one bar. So there we go, and it's stopped. When we're running more than one clip, we can come over here, this is the stop all clips button, and click here, and so if we had multiple clips running, we could stop there. But let's uh, highlight this again, and then take note of something else. Down here is where we would put audio effects to um, run that sound through, and this is the where it would go. But this is actually like a sort of tabbed thing, so this actually shows the clip itself, and you'll notice that when we um, hit go, this is coming across here and playing those things. And because loop is uh, selected here, it just keeps going around and around and around. So if I turn this off, um, I imagine it'll go to the end and stop. So there you go. This is the, um, the clip, and 
its clip automation, I guess we would call it. And then um, just one more thing of note, and that is like the little triangles that were around here that, that allowed the, you to close and open windows, there are, sometimes you'll see these black circles and yellow circles, and they're for extra windows that you can open as well. So in this case, um, L, I imagine, was for launch, and E for envelopes, and this is for the sample. So you can get rid of the sample, you can get rid of the envelopes, you can get rid of the launch, and there it is, just the clip <coughs> by itself, if you need that space. If you need to work in any of those windows, that's how you get to them. The same thing holds true for the controls at the bottom of each track. This is the um, track delay, and the um, uh, this allows you to group things. I'm not sure what X would stand for, but it, this allows you to group things into A bus and B bus and things like that so that you can uh, control them together. This uh, manages the input output, and there it is, and likewise the reverb, the delay, oops, sorry, uh, what is that? Uh, oh, the sends, sends, reverb, and delay, uh, this is probably, yeah, so there you go, the, but you can control all those things and get them out of your way if you want to. Anyway, um, that should do it for getting around um, Max, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.